Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Valas here in Birmingham. We've just had the way in as we look forward to Saturday night show from the Coventry Sky Dome, joined by Reese Cartwright, who headlines the show in a fight with Shaq Peters for the WBC International Belt. Reese, thank you very much for giving me some of your time. Uh, how are we? I'm good, I'm good, very good, excited, looking forward to it. We've got quite a lot to talk about. Um, you spent two years out of the ring, I want to talk a little bit about that before that and whatnot. Um, Essentially, you were meant to have two fights with Jack Cullen, right? Because when I saw that you were fighting Shaq and the thing that went into my head was, I remember you were meant to have was it two fights with Jack Cullen. They both got cancelled. Just the rematch, right? The rematch. I was supposed to have... I won Tyler Denny, the English English champion. And then um, I was supposed to defend it against Jack Cullen. And then all of a sudden, I wanted it in Leeds, but it come because he's a big ticket seller, so I meant to do it in his backyard. So I said, OK, that's no problem. And then when it come round to it... Uh, I was two weeks out from the fight, I broke my rib. So, obviously I couldn't fight, it pulled me from the fight, I was, I was devastated, it took the title off me. And uh, yeah, from there that's when it started to spiral, my life just spiralled. Yeah, we'll talk about obviously, and obviously what you want to talk about uh, yourself and what you can open up and tell me, but like I said, when I heard you were fighting Shaka, and it was sort of the last thing I remember of Reese was the fact that you were meant to fight Jack Cullen and it never happened. So then, from then to now, in them two years, if you could just kind of let us and the boxing public know sort of what's been going on in your life? It's it's one of them, in it, where mental health hit me, it hit me hard. Like I said, I, I lost my English title and I lost my mind. Uh, tried killing myself, nearly died. And then, um, yeah, I got my boxing license, took off me. And it just spiralled from there. I just went downhill and downhill and depression hit me, anxiety hit me. And then, like you say, well, like two years down the line, a year down the line, just didn't get better. And then I had a phone call from one of my mates I, I, stopped, I, thought, I honestly thought everyone stopped caring. Like, I'm not boxing anymore, no one cares. I got a phone call from one of my mates, now my business partner. Um, took me for a run, took me for a run, we went running, uh, done some fitness and stuff. And then we started helping kids uh, off the street. We, had, we got a few kids off the street, stopped selling drugs, and stopped getting, getting into gang bullshit. And it was doing good. And then, like I said, I've done that through boxing and then one day I took one of my kids down, a heavyweight kid, and this heavyweight professional just knocked the fuck out of him and it it, it, it got me mad. And then the fight room had come out and that's it, the gloves come out and that were it. Just talking about you helping the kids and, I don't know, can you almost like say that was a coping mechanism of trying to help you with your own problems, helping other people, if that makes sense? Do you know what? Uh, it was when my mate and my business partner come up to me and it was just trying to get me better, try to, try, to, try to help me, get me out of that mindset. And, it was doing whatever it takes to get me out of my say It was little runs here and there, but I'd do a run, I'd go home straight back into my pit and I'd lay there and know what would go on. So then it started going a bit further. He said, why don't we open a business together, Jim? And I thought, all right, yeah, yeah. Just fight with, fight with bollocks. And the next thing, we've got a meeting with an accountant and we set up this limited company. And I was like, but yeah, we, we set that up. And we started, getting, we started actually seeing kids come off the street. So it was sort of a coping mechanism. But it sort of matters to me as well. So it's... A bit of both. I spoke to Masha recently just before he fought in one of the boxer tournaments and I don't know if you can perhaps liken a similar situation where he said, as soon as the phone stops ringing, because when you're a boxer and you're a professional, that's your whole life, the training, the training towards a specific date. When that's taken away from you, that people outside of boxing don't understand how hard that is. It's a big blow because I think once, once you start boxing and everyone, everyone sees you in the street and says, oh yeah, yeah, first thing they say to you, how's boxing going, have you got any fights lined up? When you start seeing people in the street and they're saying, oh, you're on school run tomorrow. Uh, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, it's a, it's a kicking bollocks. It's not nice, but I started getting over that. I start, I, I stopped to mind because, like I said, I wasn't leaving the house. I was, I was literally in, in the pit. I, I wasn't moving. And, but I started to forget about that sort of stuff. And then, like you say, as when someone, someone, one of my boxers got chinned, I didn't like it. And that's when fighting, fighting me come out again. And I thought, Fuck, I'll put gloves on because, to be fair, now, the kids that we've got coming, they get they're getting gassed because I'm fighting. They're like, oh my, yeah, my coach is knocking guys out on a big show as well. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. They're all watching me on Channel Five. I better perform, aren't I? <laughs> you ain't got a choice now because otherwise you're going to look yeah, annoying. No, no, um, but in terms of, let's say you had called it a day, and we'll talk about sort of the comeback and what you want to achieve now in a bit. But say you hadn't um, made a return to boxing and you, you got yourself and your mind straight, would you have been content with what you achieved in the previous half of your career? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't at all. I, um, I won the IBF Youth World title. Uh, I won that, defended it twice. 
that's a that in itself that is a brilliant achievement. I was happy with that. I was over the moon with that. But when you win that and it goes a month down the line, two months down the line, you look at it as a stepping stone. At first, it's a target. It's a goal. You've done it. You're happy. But then when you've had it for a month, it's just a stepping stone. So I was looking to bigger things, and then the English title come round, and I thought, well, I've got IBF Youth World Title. What do I want that for? But like I said, uh, Errol, Errol Johnson and that were paying me to go down and fight. So I thought, well, I'll take some dough, yeah. I went down and won the English title. And then that, that sort of set me on. I thought, right, I can defend this against Jack Cullen. I promised a few things. So I'd do another title on the line after I made that defence. I'll, I'll do a bigger title on the line. So um, I was looking towards that title as well. And then when I cancelled this because of the rib situation, it just it hit me like, a, like an house fell down on me. Well, look, like you said, you sort of got everything in your life straight. You've got goals, visions and other things going on, <clears throat> pardon me, outside of boxing. Um, you've had one fight since your return, which, which was this year. And now you're jumping into to a massive fight, which I suppose if you're going to come back, why not do it? Big style, you're jumping in with someone that there's a little bit of hype around. He's been on TV a few times, former British champion. And uh, for a belt that's got some value as well. So if you were to win on Saturday night, you are back in the mix after two fights, two fight return. Well, that, that's the that's the aim, that's the target because I'm not classing that that, that comeback fight as a fight. It was just a quick stoppage. I, I went to try and get a points win, and the, the guy stopped throwing back, and the referee stopped it. So I couldn't really class that as a as a comeback fight. For me, this is the comeback fight. Back then, when I took that fight, I was I was out of shape. I was fat. I want I, I want me. So I'm not counting that, but. This is the comeback fight. Like, who does this? Who comes back after three years out of the ring and jumps in here with a light heavyweight British champion for a WBC international? It's it's madness. But for me, it's, I feel like I, I belong on this big stage anyway. A lot of people, let's just say that there'll be cynics who will go, well, you beat Tyler Denny for the middleweight title and then you had, was it middleweight title? I think I'm wrong, middleweight, yeah. And then you have some time out and come back up with light heavy. They might just go, he's just come back and in them two years he's just sort of blown up but you look like a, a light heavyweight who's in shape as well so this is like a different version of yourself yeah I used, I used to at middleweight I used to I'm not gonna lie I used to struggle to make the weight I used to really struggle to make the weight like if I told you what I'd done to make the weight you'd be sick you'd be like no he's lying but like I say I'm, I'm, st I'm not saying I made weight a breeze this time around but it was a lot easier and um, I feel strong I feel fast I feel powerful and I think I think that side of me is underestimated. Like I think the power side, people are going to be shocked. Just quickly, sort of touching on Shakan and what you make of him um, as a fighter. Like I said, there was a little bit of a buzz around him. He's long, he's rangy, um, but he has been beaten and he has been stopped. So, just sort of your assessment of, of Shakan as a fighter. First of all, I'd, I, I'll say what I said to him in the weigh-in. I said I thought he was going to be a knobhead. For following his interviews before the fight. Well, I've seen him at the press conference, I was expecting him to be a knobhead. But he's come across, he's respectful, he's, he's a good man. He's a good fighter. I, know, I knew he was a good fighter before that, so I rate him as a fighter. I now rate him as a man. So I'm just going to get in there, do the business. Whatever result it is, we're going to shake hands after. And that's it, I respect the guy and I hope he goes far in the spot. And I know I said, would you have been content with what you achieved in the first half of your career? I know you're not overlooking Saturday night because that's... Um, what, what, one of the biggest nights of your career but in terms of this part of your career have you got anything specifically you want to achieve be it a certain arena you want to fight at a belt you want to win just something like a, almost a boxing bucket list of what you want to achieve in this in this part of your career I'll tell you what I want to achieve in my career I'll tell you right now you can tell me if I'm being a dick you can tell me if it's if it's right but I want in fucking dough mate I want in dough I want in fucking pesta I want in money I want to feed my son I want to give my son everything he wants everything he needs I want to put him through life nice, I want money. Belts would be nice, but end of the day, money comes with belts, that's what I'm chasing. Too fucking right, mate, too <laughs> fucking right. Um, Reese, thanks for giving me some of your time. Um, good to see that you're going to be back in the ring on Saturday doing your thing. Good luck, and um, yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah, respect, mate, thank you.